The Heartbeat of the Life Church is its members. In each episode, you'll hear the stories of people you know, and maybe those you don't. This is the TLC Heartbeat Podcast. Welcome back to the TLC Heartbeat Podcast. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Calvin and Arnetta Jenkins. Thank you guys so much for being here today. It's good to be here. So, uh, I think the first time I was able to interact with you guys um, it was probably actually Calvin um, at a security training you did. You did a, um, uh, an active shooter uh, drill, and I ended up uh, playing a bad guy and getting tackled in the lobby. Uh, so uh, it was good times. But uh, ever since then, uh, it seems like you guys have been really active, not just in security roles, but also in uh, Monday night prayer. That's, that's one of the things where I think I've gotten to have the most exposure to you guys. Uh, and I'll tell you, it's a, it's a pleasure to kind of see you guys work together uh, on Monday Night Prayer. It's, it's, a, cool, it's a cool experience. You know, having an original image in my head of, you know, this is a, this is a couple that's all about business and you know, security, and then seeing the, the spiritual side of you, like, come on, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool thing. So um, tell me a little bit, uh, Arnett, I'll start with you. Like, tell me a little bit about your, your background. How did you get to, to the Life Church? How were you raised? You know, Where did you come from? Oh, well, I was raised here in Dallas. Um, I grew up in the Muslim faith. Oh, wow. My mom was Muslim, and of course she grew us up like that, but of course, once I left the house, I went my own way. I started going to a, a apostolic church over there in the Oak Cliff. Um, then uh, my husband decided that he wanted to go elsewhere. So we went to another church, um, I think in the Mesquite area, mm -hmm. another apostolic church. And then the spirit led him over here. And I tell you, this has been the best experience I've had. Wow, amen. I amen. You didn't how you think you 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 you're there and you kinda know, but and I was reluctant. I didn't want to mm -hmm. come. I did not. I was like I'm the, I'm the type of person that once I get somewhere, I'm grounded, you're I'm there. my hundred percent, I'm here, and then and then you change. And I'm 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 a person of routine. Basically, mm -hmm. you, put, you make roots where you're planting. Yeah, yeah, and but God knows what's best for us mm -hmm. because I believe as you go, as you go one place to another, you're supposed to grow. Mm -hmm. And I have definitely grown here wow. at the Light Church. It is amazing the diversity here, and God has really shown me of uh, His love. Wow. And it is it's it's amazing. I love it. Different music at first. I was like. This is not my kind of, no, I but I love it. I love it. My husband's kind of give it. I was like, wow, God is really awesome. So That's cool. Amen. Um, so real quick, I want to ask, uh, being raised in the Muslim faith, that's, that's a story I don't think many people in the church could probably uh, uh, relate to. Um, so that's, that's very interesting. Can you expound a little bit more? Uh, obviously, you're, you're not still practicing that faith, but what about that experience shaped who you are today? It might have been the, I guess the closeness, I guess, or the discipline that they had. Cause my mm -hmm. mother, she was Baptist, and then my my dad brought her into that faith, mm -hmm. and the things that we had to do and everything. And I was, you know, how you doing it? Because you know, those are your parents. Mm -hmm. But I'm just glad that God, you know, led me another way. He had a plan for my mm -hmm. life. You know, even though we don't think, what is going on here? Sure. But thank God you just just follow through. So I'm just thankful that I'm here today. That's cool. And then Calvin, tell me a little bit about your your background. How did how were you raised, and then transition that to how you met your wife? I was born and raised in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, I'm the youngest of eight children. Wow. And four boys and four girls. And I watched my my father told my three older brothers that when you turn 18, you have to leave the house. Mm. And so. I saw my three older brothers leave, and then when I graduated high school, I graduated high school, the next week I joined the military, and I was on the bus, and I was gone. You were gone. Wow. I was gone. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's, and so that's how I got to Texas, you know, joined the military, spent a couple of years in Germany, mm -hmm. got reassigned to Fort Hood, Texas. Uh, I was looking at uh, getting out originally, which I did my first couple of years, and I got a job with the Dallas Police Department. And that's how I got to Dallas. And, uh, and then from there, I met her. 
So yeah, tell me about that. Like, where did, where did you guys meet? So I was working in communications in, in the dungeon down, downtown yeah. City Hall. And uh, I had a mutual friend. She was a fellow dispatcher when I was down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, she introduced me. She said, well, hey, you know, you're, you're, you're single, you're alone. I'm just plugging away, doing everything. Yeah. And next thing I know, a friend of mine that I worked together introduced me to our name. Meet your friend. Yeah. What, what were your first thoughts whenever whenever you met him? <laughs> uh, I, I didn't. I told him, uh, I really don't want to do anything. You know how <laughs> meet your friends say, hey, I want yeah, you to meet this yeah. person. And you were. And I was like, eh, okay. I just kind of got out of a relationship that didn't want to, you know. Yeah. But. Hmm. I guess God, it was meant to be because I was mm -hmm. like, I'm meeting him, I'm going about my business, I'm going, but then somehow we hooked up back together again and took off from there. Wow. So we dated for about six months. And we got married after six months. Yeah. After six months, we got married. <laughs> Been married for 27 years. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so when mutual friend, she actually invited me to her church, which, yeah. which was an apostolic church, Pentecostal church. Um, Arnett was going to the same church. I think we we got baptized and saved within a week from each other. Yeah, within a week week of each other. Uh, and so that that started the road uh, for for us in the church. Mm -hmm. And and we've been in the church all twenty seven years of our marriage. So wow, that's, that's that's pretty special. Um, one of the things that this podcast is going to be about is specifically highlighting people's testimonies. Now, you, you began to tell me a little bit about the beginnings of the story there. Um, but could both of you, uh, I'll start back with you, Arnetta, tell me about some key moments with God throughout your life, uh, maybe testimony isn't the right way to say it, but just what are some moments with God that brought you to where you are today? The way I see you now, you guys have just such a passion, uh, I hear you guys pray, and like, you guys just take this so seriously. What was, how, did you, how did God shape you guys into the people you are now? Well, I started with our marriage. Because you know how they say the first seven years is yeah. rough, the first yes. couple of years are rough. It's true. And me being an independent person, mm -hmm. I was already on my own when I met him, had two jobs, you know, on you my doing own, your thing. doing yeah. my thing. And so, you know, not understanding the word uh, fully about, you know, submitting to your mm -hmm. husband and making sure and trying to be compatible, mm -hmm. I was like, I don't have to be here. I can go about my business. Sure. And so, but, you know, I sat down one day and the Lord, you know, said, hey, this is a commitment that you made. Yeah. And I said, Lord, okay, um, I'm going to stick with him. I'm going to do wow. what you said to do. And God changed me. God changed him. I just, and, it, and that started me in saying, hey, it's been the best. I mean, the love we have between each other, the love I know my husband has for me, I know it's God. Mm -hmm. It's just God. You just, you just, you just know it's nothing but God. Wow. So that's what started me. That's a miracle uh, that I feel like a testimony in my life about how I know God uh, has can change me, wow. has changed him, and our love has grown together. It's just, it's just awesome. So that's cool. What would be your side of, of all this? What's, what would be your testimony or key moments with God that shaped you? I guess the, the I guess the first that started me really on just giving it all to God when my daughter was born. Uh, my daughter was born. Uh, it, it changed my life to where it's it's one thing to be in a household and trying to take care of yourself and trying to take care of your wife and trying to get everything done. And, I, and she's right. Our first couple of years were. It was just the adjustment phase, you know. I call it the five stages of grief. The first couple of years, you know, you just got to go through some things, you know. Oh, and you know, in the back end, you're gonna be okay. Oh, and then my daughter crazy. was born, and uh, and and I had my when my daughter was born. I started to see how much it took, and how much it took to raise this this young beautiful creature, and how much it took of my wife, and and how it kind of changed us. And I had to reach out. I re I, so my I reached out to my father. Mm. And I'm like, Dad, you raised, you know, four boys and four, and I got this little one. How did you do this? Mm -hmm. You know, and he was like, You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be patient. You gotta trust in the Lord. And one day, I was a police officer, and I was working. It was late night, and I was working. Uh, it was an off-duty job, and it was late at night, nine, ten o'clock at night. 
uh, of working in South Dallas at an at off-duty McDonald's. Mm. And I looked outside and my wife was outside and she had my daughter in the child seat. And she, she, she walks inside and says, you know, Linnea needs milk and pampers. And at the time we had separate bank accounts. And, and, I, and I, I, just, I just looked at my feet like, oh my God, my wife and child had to come meet me at nine to 10 o'clock at night to wow. get some things that they should have already had. Wow. And so at, at, I think the next day I said, look, no more separate accounts. You will close your account. You will put all of your money in my account and you will give me an allowance every day. And so ever since that day, she handled all the finances wow. and she basically gave me an allowance. She's, she's smarter at it. She, she had better accounting skills. And so I just let go and let God. I just trusted Release my the control. Wife. Release the control. And, and, uh, wow. and, and, and God has enriched us ever since then. That's really, that's really cool. Um, it's, it's interesting. I think when I, when I was uh, thinking about the question of testimony, I think a lot of times um, what would come to my mind would be like, Alter moments, or like moments as a kid, or something like that. But it's very interesting that you would say no. It was your God shaping you. It didn't come at this like uh, ecstatic emotional experience at alter. It came in the context of a relationship of of having to act out yes. your your faith to your spouse. Like, and, and that process is what changed both of you. Like, that's that's very cool. Um, and I, I think there there could be a danger of uh i don't i don't quite how to say this so give me grace here but idolizing the altar experience as in like making that the focal point of that's where god uh that's where god operates i'm at home and i will come to church to interact with god as opposed to having god just meet you and hit you right between the eyes right in your home you know sometimes god sounds like your spouse and uh and uh you know like just making it very real like getting the process of sanctification or, or changing us not being something that's just done in a building, but, but done in the context of, of the greatest gift, you know, one of the greatest gifts he's given us in marriage. I don't know. It's just, that's that's, right. you've really got my mind going with that. It's, it's good. Um, and it's cool to see, um, I think we talk a lot about love, but it, the respect that you guys uh, are, are aware that you need to have for each other. Not that you guys don't have differences, but it seems clear that you guys are, are very conscious that respect has to be a component. Uh, so that's, that's cool. I, I hope I can, I can emulate that. Um, so uh, let me, that was a whole long ramble, but I, I want to transition that. Um, I've talked a couple times. You guys are very engaged in Monday Night Prayer. Um, how, what has that journey been about? Like, tell me more about your guys' your prayer life and, and what's important to you oh spiritually. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> One day I was in Monday Night Prayer. You know how your phone will pick up what you're saying if you have it close to you? I, when I work, sometimes I talk, uh, I'm talking, and next thing you know, the phone is responding to me. So one night when Miss my uh, sister Juanita was praying, mm -hmm. you know, she prays in Spanish sometimes, mm -hmm. and I started praying too, and I felt uh, me praying spiritually in tongues. My phone was out because it was I was next to go up to pray, mm -hmm. and I picked up when, when everything was over. I picked up my phone, and what I was saying was written out and I was speaking in tongue but it came out in English and then there was a response that said I hear you mm -hmm. and I was whoa and I, I saved it I took a screenshot of it and I was like did you look, look you see this and I was just so amazed God amazed me wow. that day what do you need say, experience I, hear you. I know I was like I, I know I wasn't talking in English I know I wasn't and and to see that, and it was the words were in, in English, and then the response, you know, mm -hmm. I hear you, and it was so amazing. That's why I said this, uh, this place has brought me closer to, mm -hmm. to the Lord. To, to, you can't stop. You have to continue to press on to ask the Lord to show you more, mm -hmm. because His Word said, "Greater things shall you do." Mm -hmm. And if you want the Lord to show you something. You just have to believe it. Like you said, sometimes your mind, you'd be like, but I was like, Lord, I know you were, I know, I know mm -hmm. you're there. I know you're there. And that response to me, wow, it's changed. It's, it was amazing. Wow. Uh, Calvin, what about you? What, like, what role does prayer play in your life? Because listening to you pray, it's a very, uh, it's a very moving experience. I, I very much enjoy uh, your guys' leadership in that area. 
I think I started coming to the Life Church in March of 2019. And the church that we attended before, uh, the pastor of that church basically left town. He, he left Texas, went back to Tennessee. And so, uh, so I seen the writing on the wall. Uh, I knew we needed another place to go worship. And so I started coming here. Uh, Tony uh, Brooks and I were friends from a long time. Mm -hmm. And so when I came in in March, uh, the first sermon I heard Pastor Man preach was, it said, it, the title of the sermon was, The Bible Didn't Say That. God Didn't Say That. And he, and, and, and he focused on one of my favorite apostles, which is Peter. He talked about 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 15. If God wants us to be happy, he's gonna, uh, it's going to be right. We have to do the right things. God wants us to, you know, there's, there's a lot of preaching about God wants us to be happy. But if God wants us to be happy, but God wants us to be happy in him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the pastor, you know, he, he did a deeper dive and said, you know, the, God wants us to be blessed. Mm -hmm. And so from there, the hearing, hearing God work through the pastor, it said, God, are you speaking to me right now? Mm -hmm. and, and I want to make sure, God, that I hear you. And I said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And, and that's, that's what got me here. Uh, a wife joined later on. And, and it, it seems like the Lord was here. He was moving here. He was speaking to my heart, speaking to my spirit here. And as one of those just, just let, letting go and, and, and allowing God to minister to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, the Monday night, have been a very strong point for me. Matter of fact, I, I, I got a new job and I wanted to make sure that no matter what happens, that I'm not going to necessarily focus on the gifts, but focus on the giver. Mm -hmm. That as God has blessed me, uh, I wanted to make sure that I'm, I'm listening to what God is saying. And, and the, the Monday nights allow me an opportunity more than any other night to be free just to listen to what God wow. is saying to my heart. Wow. You, you know, we, 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 I love serving others. I love putting service among self, but it was just at, at some point I wanted to come to church and just be free to just worship and not have anything else to worry mm -hmm. about. And that's what Monday night is to me. That's so special. Uh, would, would you echo? Uh, it's just, oh my husband, when he when we first met, he was he said he was a cop. Mm -hmm. He was always working off duty jobs. Mm -hmm. So he and he was in the army. So when we were at the first church we were at together, he hardly get to come to church. Mm -hmm. He was always away. He was always doing something. It was just you know me going to church and he come when he can. And my prayer to God was that we would grow together. Mm -hmm. And I would tell the people at the, the leaders at the church, please pray for my husband. It's like, what do you want to pray for, for him to get a promotion? No, I want him wow. to be closer to God. And where we are today, I know God has answered my prayers. I said, Lord, I want us to grow together. That's so special. And so look where we are today. Wow. We've, we've grown together. We're doing prayer together. And it is just amazing. If you, whatever you ask the Lord, you be patient. Amen. And, mm -hmm. you, and you wait. Amen. And he will deliver because he has. Because I love for God has grown so much as more as much as our relationship between each other because when they say you can't make without God Amen. you cannot if you're gonna please God you're gonna please each other yeah point blank because God is love and we absolutely have love between each other well even the analogy using the Bible is like husbands love your wife as mm -hmm. Christ loves the church I mean it's it we're, this is supposed to be a reflection of what God does and if, if if we're going to divorce God from the, the equation, I, we shouldn't be surprised if, if the marriage struggles. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's really cool. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, and even just to complete that thought, husbands should love their wives the way, the way Christ loved the church, and then to go further in that scripture and give himself up for her. Mm -hmm. And so the, there, there, there are times when, when, when you have to put uh, the love of God first. And... and there are often times, and she and I have had this conversation, and, and I'm sure I can talk about the good wife, good husband conversation we've had. Sure. Okay, so so we've we've, we've had this conversation. It's not a debate; it's just just a robust conversation. <laughs> uh, so about you know, am I a good husband? 
is she a good wife? And then we, we both came to the conclusion that we don't get to decide that. I can't decide amongst myself whether I'm a good husband or not. She gets to vote on that. Mm. And, and I've known that God has blessed me through my life to bless her. Mm -hmm. there, there are things that promotions and advantages and opportunities that I've had. And I'm like, why am I, why am I receiving this? And then I was receiving certain blessings in my life that were, they were not necessarily for me. Mm -hmm. They were to bless her. Wow. You're blessed to bless others. I'm blessed to bless others. Uh, I'll, I'll wrap up with this one last question, and, and thank you guys so much for all your time. Um, the, the TLC Heartbeat Podcast, uh, we call it Heartbeat because um, we're featuring the, the people of the church, and in my mind, the people are the heartbeat of the, of the church. Like, you know, we, we are the church, um, but the word heartbeat can also be used to describe a passion. Like, what is your heartbeat? Like, you know, like, so I wanted to end it with that. Like, we've kind of touched a lot of different things. And if you have to repeat something that's already been said, that's totally fine. But the question of what is your heartbeat? What is your passion? Uh, either one of you could go. Um, well, as I've grown older, Nathan, my heartbeat is a passion to make sure I please God. I mean, this seems like corny and something that you would say normally routine. But um, looking at everything that's happened in the past couple of years, everything that's going on in this world, knowing how I, I've increased my knowledge of God, mm -hmm. uh, I want to please Him. That's That would be my passion, and that would be, you know, whatever He wants us to do, whatever His purpose is in my life, mm -hmm. that would be my passion. What about you? I, I mean, I, I was, initially I was gonna say, when I, is to help you know, develop, uh, you know, coach, train, mentor others, and that's just initially that's what I wanted to do is 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 to be able to 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 to, to help others to, to, to reach their spiritual goals. But then now that I thought about it for a little bit, I just want to be a facilitator. I, I just want to not be an obstacle, not not be a barrier, just to just to facilitate others uh, in their spiritual walk in whatever way I can. Uh, and sometimes that could be a hand on the shoulder, or, or that could be bring somebody a meal. It's just whatever it is. I just want to I just want to be. A facilitator and, and whatever God uh, has me to do. That's beautiful. Um, thank you guys so much for all your time. Uh, it means a lot that you would, you would take this time to talk to us. Um, for everyone, uh, the TLC Heartbeat Podcast, we're, we want to tell the stories of those who are in our community here at the Life Church. If there's anyone else that you want to hear more about, if you want to know more about their story, please reach out. Uh, we're very grateful you took the time to watch. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the TLC Heartbeat Podcast. The vision of this podcast is to tell the stories of the Life Church members. If there's anyone whose story you want to hear, please reach out and let us know. You can find us online at tlcdallas.com or on Facebook at The Life Church Dallas. Thank you for watching and listening.